Hello and welcome to Tensar Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. Well, we've been in Panama all week at the, Latin Amer at the Tensar Latin America meeting, uh, learning about exciting projects all over Latin America and the Caribbean using Tensar applications. That's given us this brilliant opportunity to come and see this international engineering landmark, which is the Panama Canal. That's been providing a shortcut for ships to pass between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans for over a hundred years. And just recently, um, in 2006, the, the canal was expanded to double its capacity with larger locks. If you just turn around and look over there, Brian, those are the Agua Clara locks. So we're at the Atlantic side. Those are the larger locks with the post Panamax size. So big ships such as the one that's just passed, uh, they can now go through there and the older locks are behind the building to the right. So the canal is that way. And this ship here is heading out underneath the Atlantic Bridge towards the Atlantic Ocean. You can just about some, see some other ships waiting to come in. So the geology of this area is a highly heterogeneous mix of uh, igneous flows, igneous intrusions, and softer sedimentary deposits that you would expect at the boundary between multiple uh, tectonic plates where we are now. So that's created a number of geotechnical challenges. Uh, particularly concerning the, the new locks. Not these ones, but the, the Pacific ones at the other side, um, they, the, they have three steps, like uh, this lock here. So that is to raise the ship 27 meters above sea level so they can enter the lake uh, to travel to the other side. But the upper two chambers of the Pacific locks are on hard basalt rock, but the lower chamber is on a much softer clay rock. So imagine the differential settlement that the designers had to contend with on that huge uh, structure there. But uh, the Panama Canal is, is more well known for the, uh, for the Culebra Cut. That is um, a 13 kilometer long cutting through the highest point in the canal um, over that way. Because of the uh, interfaces between the igneous rocks and the softer clay deposits, that's cr that created a lot of instability, even during construction. And actually 20% of the excavated volume from that cutting was removing the slides that were occurring throughout construction. So, um, and not only that, when it opened in, um, after it opened in um, 1915, two major slides occurred after some heavy rainfall that actually closed the, the, the canal about a year after it opened and the slides continued uh, and so there was about 40 million cubic meters of material that was removed by about 1930 because of all these slides but it's a good illustration of how geotechnical engineering has advanced so when the original canal was designed in the uh, late 19th century very little was known about the factors contributing to slope instability um, but in 1968 Arthur Casagrande uh, instigated an observational method here so Still today, there are over 300 monitoring stations distributed all around the canal, monitoring small movements that might occur, as well as the rainfall, so they can predict the onset of a landslide and take proactive action to prevent that occurring by putting in extra drainage or excavation to, to unload uh, the slope a little bit. And they've back-analyzed all those previous slides uh, to understand better the geology and the strength envelopes uh, of those slopes. So now, uh, because of advances in geotechnical engineering, uh, slides are, are very rare. Another hazard is uh, erosion of the banks. So from the passing ships, in particular the tugs, they generate quite a wash that will erode the cohesive uh, uh, soil embankments here. So on the bank opposite, you can see that it's unprotected. Uh, here, if we go down here, Brian, have a closer look at this. Tensa has been providing its Triton mattress uh, erosion protection for 25 years for the Panama Canal. And these uh, um, mattresses are just being installed. You can see that they're composed of a highly durable geogrid that doesn't degrade and doesn't wear. And that uh, forms baskets containing these rocks within it. They absorb the waves as they come in and prevent them from uh, eroding uh, the bank underneath. So there you go, uh, an overview of the geotechnical aspects of the Panama Canal. That's all for this episode of Tensar Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.